Okay, so uh, this is just some work I've been doing in my advisor, Jeff Wood. Uh, and our goal is pretty simple. So given a stream of sensor data, we want to try to hypothesize a model which explains this data. <coughs> now, a reasonable model representation for this is just a dynamical system. And a dynamical system consists of two parts. Uh, there's a state space, where state is just a concise summary of past experience that we can use uh, to predict future observations. And there's the actual dynamics of the model, which is just a recursive rule for updating state given a new observation. Um, so this work is about trying to learn a model of a dynamical system. And trying to learn a model of a dynamical system directly from observations is actually a very difficult problem. It requires solving temporal and structural credit assignment problems, which often lead to a search space with a host of bad luck optimal. So what I'll be talking about today is um, a very general low rank approach to um, trying to solve this problem. And I'm going to provide some tricks so that we can actually try to learn a dynamical system from massive amounts of data. And specifically, I'll be talking about spectral learning algorithms uh, to learn a particular type of dynamical system model called a predictive state representation. <coughs> so a predictive state representation is a very general nonlinear dynamical system model. It includes many other models which you may be familiar with, like hidden markup models and OmniPs. Um, and one of the nice things about predictive state representations is, although it's a very general model, uh, they're actually relatively easy to learn using fast, statistically consistent spectral methods. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about um, the general strategy uh, for, for learning a dynamical system this way. So the basic idea is that, let's say we have some trace from our dynamical system, which consists of some sequence of observations. We can take the sequence of observations and we can divide it into two parts. And we can think about the first part as uh, the past and the second part as the future. And now given a lot of traces from the dynamical system, um, we can split them all up and we get a whole bunch of uh, past sequences and future sequences. And what we're gonna try to do to learn a state space is just try to predict the future sequences from the past uh, while forcing this prediction through a bottleneck. So the basic idea is that we can think about state as a predictive compression of the past. Now one way to solve this problem is we can create a covariance matrix of past and future observations. And if we, can, if we think of the bottleneck as a rank constraint on this covariance matrix, then we get a spectral learning algorithm. So now there, there are many different ways of learning a dynamical system model. Um, why are spectral methods good? Well, uh, in contrast to many other methods you may be familiar with, like maximum likelihood or Bayesian inference, um, spectral learning algorithms have no local optima, and this results in a huge gain in computational efficiency. We do have to pay for this with a slight loss in statistical efficiency, but in practice, uh, the gain in computational efficiency makes the learning algorithm um, much better. Uh, better in terms of learning a more accurate model. So, I don't really have time to go into the details of uh, these spectral approaches to learning PSRs, but I'll give you a very high level um, view of how our learning algorithm works. So first, we compute a covariance matrix of past and future sequences of observations. We then factor this covariance matrix by a singular value decomposition. And we can then recover the PSR parameters just using some linear algebra. And this, this learning algorithm is nice because it's a statistically consistent learning algorithm. It turns out we can also do interesting things like extend the learning algorithm to infinite feature spaces. Um, this involves using kernels, um, basically all the formulas that you would use to, uh, in the uh, finite dimensional feature space algorithm, um, carry over into the infinite dimensional um, algorithms. And we can just uh, rewrite all these formulas in terms of gram matrices. Uh, and then we use a kernel singular value composition instead of a singular value composition. Okay, so let's get to the, I guess, interesting part for this workshop. Uh, so, all of these learning algorithms, which I've, I've talked about for um, learning predictive state representations, have to perform a singular value decomposition of uh, a covariance matrix, or in the kernel case, a gram matrix. And this is actually a huge bottleneck. Uh, so if we have a lot of features or a lot of data points, um, we might not be able to store the gram matrix or the covariance matrix in memory, much less be able to compute a singular value decomposition of it. So for example, Let's say I want to learn a model of a video. And I have one hour of video at 24 frames per second. Each frame consists of 300 by 300 pixels. Um, and then our features of the past and future, these uh, sequences of observations, they might consist of 
um, all pixels in two second windows. Now the gram matrix would have like 10 to the 10th entries, and the covariance matrix would have like, you know, 10 to 12 entries. So trying to learn a dynamical system from either of these, or state space from either of these uh, you know, matrices would be impossible. So how do we make learning tractable? Well, we leverage two techniques. Um, we use online learning and we use random projections. Now neither one of these techniques is actually new, um, but the combination with spectral learning algorithms for predictive state representations and dynamical systems is. And it actually makes a huge difference in practice when we're trying to uh, learn these dynamical systems from a large amount of data. So the key insight for online learning um, is that uh, we have this covariance matrix, we have to factor it. Well, instead of building the covariance matrix explicitly, we just store a factored covariance matrix. And with each new observation, um, we perform a rank one update of this covariance matrix, or the factored covariance matrix. Um, and then the predictive state representation parameters can be updated accordingly, uh, just using some linear algebra. And what this means is that um, you know, we, we might have a system which has like 100,000 features, um, but uh, the, maybe the um, dimensionality of the dynamical system is only like 10 dimensions. And when something like this happens, then uh, we can easily store uh, the factored covariance matrix um, in uh, a small amount of space in the computer. And the updates are just found in time, for example, so it suddenly becomes a tractable problem. Um, now, one problem here is that if we're interested in learning uh, models for infinite dimensional feature spaces, um, there's no rank one update for kernel semi-evaluate compositions. But what we can do is instead of using infinite dimensional feature spaces, we can project down to finite dimensional feature spaces, uh, use a huge number of features, and then use our online learning algorithm to update the semi-evaluate composition of that. Okay, so we've applied these techniques to uh, several different robotics problems. Um, we're, we're trying to learn uh, dynamical system models of sensors on a slot car as it races around a track. Um, or dynamical system models of video from a robot which is moving around the room in different directions. Um, and these problems actually become tractable now where you know, other methods couldn't even attempt to solve some of these problems uh, in the past due to the large amount of data. All right, so in summary, uh, the focus of this work is just spectral learning algorithms for predictive state representation models of partially observable nonlinear dynamical systems. Um, we show how to update parameters of the estimated PSR model given new data. We show how to use random projections to approximate kernel-based learning algorithms. Um, and the combination of online learning with random projections means that we can learn order with orders of magnitude larger data sets. Um, and this then means that we can tackle robotics problems that are too complex for previous methods. So thank you very much. If you have any questions about this, uh, feel free to ask me over the poster. Thanks.